Evening all, just going to do a quick podcast for Newcastle against Burnley, just watched 90 minutes, uh, Newcastle came out on top 2-0 in the end, two shots on target for Newcastle in the first half and they scored both of them, uh, an absolute cracker from from Fabian Scher, um, so he, he's looking at about 14-15 points now after bonus, so well done to anyone who's got him. I think he's, he's less than 2% owned, but fair play if you've got him in uh, in the last couple of weeks. Uh, Mankilo picked up the assist for that one. Um, that, that brings me back to the team news. So for Newcastle, uh, surprisingly, uh, DeAndre Yedlin was dropped for Mankilo at right back. Um, apart from that, Newcastle were unchanged from, from the weekend. Uh, as for Burnley, there was no Ashley Westwood. Uh, he missed out completely, so I presume there was some kind of injury there. So Goodmanson got a start, um, having come on as a sub at the weekend. So no no major surprises really, apart from Yedlin and, and Westwood. The 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 share goal uh, before he got his goal, there was um there was an, there was an instance a, a couple of minutes before that where he he broke forward, he broke into the box. And we've seen we've seen that a lot from from share this season. You know they play the three centre backs, but he seems to be the one that has the license to to attack and to go forward. Um, you know, broke into the box early in the game. Not, nothing came of it, but shortly afterwards, then it was it was just a slow, patient build up play from Newcastle. And share found himself right at the edge of the box. You know, you don't really expect that from a, from a central defender. Uh, you know, 25, 30 yards out, and he just had a pop, and it was an absolute cracker. Nothing, nothing Tom Heaton could do about it. So. Again, it highlights how good Cher is as a, as an FPL asset this season because not only have you got his his clean sheet potential, so that's two clean sheets in a row now, um, and it's not only his threat from set pieces, you know, going up for corners, but he step he steps out from the back and, and he and he gets forward in open play as well, so that's a big bonus. He had another shot in the second half. It was you know again 25, 30 yards out and it was well over the bar, but it it just highlights. How much freedom he has to get forward. So that was a big takeaway from the game tonight. the The game as a whole, really, it was a case of field eye tests. Uh, apart from Share and the Newcastle defence, uh, a lot of people have been debating Rondon and Barnes this week. Both uh, two pointers. Both of them very very quiet. Dwight McNeil very quiet first half, taken off at half time. Uh, Almiron showed again. He showed a few glimpses of what. He might be able to bring, but he, again, he was pretty ineffective, um, and he was taken off after seventy-eight minutes. Uh, Burnley were very poor as a whole. Uh, Newcastle were never in any danger uh, of of picking up all three points. Um, what else? I'm trying to get through this as quickly as I can because I just want to forget about FPL after how tonight has gone for me and for most people, unless you own Sigurdsson or or Fabian Scheer. Uh, the second Newcastle goal was from the young kid uh, Sean Longstaff. Uh, a good finish. Um, he seems to be playing very well since he since he's come into the team, and he's he seems to have made it his own now. Uh, it was a good ball from Almiron who played it to Richie out on the wing, and it was a good cross uh, that found its way to Longstaff. There was no assist for that goal. Um, it, it came off a defender before it came to Longstaff. Uh, but good play from Almiron in the build up. Um, but as I said, two shots in the first half and two goals. And just just before half time, there was a huge chance for Burnley to to get back into the game. Uh, Ashley Barnes uh, headed the ball across goal, and and Tarkowski was about two, three or four yards out, and he just blazed it over. So that would obviously be an Ashley Barnes assist. Uh, so very frustrating for for Barnes owners there that Tarkowski missed that one. Uh, yeah, McNeil came off at half time then. Uh, for Robbie Brady so you know I said to a couple of people maybe a week or two ago that I was wary I would be wary of McNeil because of Brady and Goodmanson and we've seen that tonight with with McNeil coming off at half time so what does that mean you know will Brady start the next game will McNeil keep his place it's very hard to know now so I think it's a case of if you don't have him you probably don't get him now and just wait and see what happens there the the sec the second half uh Almiron, there was one occasion where Almiron, you know, he he made a lot of good runs. Uh, you know, he, he was often further forward than Rondon. Uh, Rondon was very quiet. You know, a few half chances, but nothing really. Uh, Almiron looked probably more threatening. You know, he, he ran in behind uh, quite often. There was one occasion where he was kind of not one on one with Heaton, but he kind of ran in at an angle, and it was a very heavy first touch that allowed Heaton to come out and make the save. Uh, but one thing I took away from the game about Almiron that he is rapid. He is very very fast. Um, 
And you know, I think we will see FPL points from him, but you know, tonight was a better judge of his potential rather than the, playing against ten men Huddersfield at the weekend. And he just didn't do enough for me tonight to you know make me go out, and go out and want to get him. Um, and Rondon was the same, really. Uh, I noted down during the game, just on the notepad, 60 minutes, uh, that Ashley Barnes and Chris Wood had barely had a touch. Um, and I, when Crouch, Crouch was warming up after about 65 minutes, and I was thinking it could be either one of these strikers to go off because it wasn't really that they were poor. They had absolutely no service, and that tends to be the issue with Burnley. They don't have a very creative uh, midfield. You know, Hendrick and Jack Cork played centre midfield today, you know, Zero creativity really from those two. Um, they're more workhorses than than creative players. So uh, Barnes was the one who got subbed off for Crouch on seventy one minutes, uh, and Wood ended up getting taken off as well. So no service, uh, no impact on the game either player. Um, I think that's most things covered. So again, apart from Cher and the Newcastle defence, Dubravka had a good game as well. Apart from that, nobody really came away from that game well. In, in FPL terms the one thing I will mention a lot of people were looking at you know talking about Hayden as well Newcastle I think he's 4.3 4.4 million uh, a lot of people were trying to decide whether to go McNeil or Hayden um, Hayden played today again but one thing I would say about him is he, he gives away a lot of fouls he was pretty lucky to, to not get booked tonight because there was quite a few uh, fouls I'm pretty sure he didn't get a yellow Um and the issue with him is Longstaff had another good game and there's a lot of midfielders competing for places there. You've got Mo Diame who came off the bench tonight. You've got Shelby who should be back soon and you've got Key there as well. So I would be very wary of getting Hayden. There's a very good chance that he could lose his spot at some point, um, You know, like we've seen with McNeil tonight as well. So these players, 4.3, 4.4, 4.5, they're priced at that for a reason. You usually don't get an awful lot from them. Um, they might get a, a run on the team, but it usually doesn't last too long. So that's me for tonight. Absolute horror show again. Uh, I had Doherty, Jimenez, brought in Harvey Barnes today, and who was the fourth one? Uh, Pereira. So seven points from four players, I think. But again, most people are in the same boat tonight. Tomorrow is my wife's birthday, um, so I'm going to take a day off. I'm going to... St- we're going out for dinner tomorrow night, so I'm going to completely avoid everything, team news, scores, everything, and, and just enjoy the night. Um, so I brought in, I brought in, took the minus four to bring in Aguero and captained Aguero. So I'm just going to avoid everything tomorrow night because it's 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 less painful that way. Um, I'm recording episode three of the Fantasy Bed podcast tomorrow night with James. So we're recording about ten o'clock, quarter past ten, right after the game. So it's going to be. Get in from uh, dinner, you know, quickly check what has happened and, and either record very happy or maybe not show up for the podcast at all if, if, if Aguero blanks and Salah, Salah goes off in one. But let's see what happens. Uh, hopefully tomorrow night's a better night than tonight. So I can't imagine too many people will listen to this podcast. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if you do, hopefully you took something from it. Um, no, there'll be probably no eye tests for the Wednesday night game so I'll be back with eye tests for the weekend Fantasy Bet we're recording tomorrow night and the 59th minute podcast my own one will return next Tuesday a lot of people have been asking me about it I just haven't had time recently uh, with other commitments and it'll be back next Tuesday and it'll be every Tuesday then whenever there's a game week uh, right up until the end of the season